All right. Yeah. Well, I think we'll go ahead and get started then. Um, 7.34, that's plenty of time. For those of you who haven't been here before, I'm Jamie. I've been a solitary witch for 22 years, and I started this after I got laid off from my job from COVID and decided I'm going to do what I really want to do with my life, which is help new witches discover their path and whatever that means for them. This and is I'm, my... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Kat. I'm her mother, and I'm a new witch like most of you. So I've just been exposed to and trying to learn the craft for the past two years since I moved to Florida with the girls. And there's a lot to learn. And I always have a lot of questions and I always get a lot out of these sessions. And if you aren't doing this, I recommend a notebook to take notes because <laughs> I've built up quite a bit of knowledge from, from these meetups and other sources. So welcome. Yeah. In November, we will have been doing this one year. That's mind blowing. Okay. So I chose tonight's topic about houseplants because I think that it's an easy place to start with cultivating stuff for your spells if, when you're ready. Um, they, if you don't want to use them for spells, they're also just great for aesthetics and they actually do practical things like clean your air and stop bacteria from you know, spreading around. So I chose plants that can be used for both. Really pleasing aesthetically, easy to care for, but every single one of them can be used in a spell, has an association to an element and a planet. Um, so you might be asking like why plants and what plants do for us individually is to get us outside of our own heads. And every time we get outside of our ego, we're able to reflect and grow. So it gives your mind that quiet time while you're taking care of your plants. If you've done shadow work, you'll know that the reflection time is super important to just understand who you are. That's like the thing we're mostly missing and why people seek witchcraft because you lose who you are because we've been educated <laughs> in all the other crap on how things are supposed to be the template of life and such. So with plants, you start there and it can grow into this beautiful experience of having plants your way, growing them in shapes that you like, pots that you like. It's sort of a, it's, kind of, it's a craft in itself, I think, <laughs> just owning the plants. And it's addictive, like tattoos, if anybody knows that, like getting one is, you want another one, another one, another one. Um, so. I can attest to that. I didn't have any a couple of years ago, and now I have a room full and a lanai full, and I feel like I always want more. Like, I never have enough plant in a yard full, and I feel like I never have enough. So. so I do want to tell you about seven things that plants really do for the witch's practice, or for somebody just interested in um, a spiritual journey. When you live with plants, you bring about a harmony with nature inside your own house. So you're bringing in that earth element and an air element. So you're cleaning the air with most of your plants and then you're having that dirt actually in your house in spaces. So remember that plants are living beings. They hold a vibration like everything does. And each plant has its own energy. So as you bring them into your home, you're energizing the space in your house with that plant energy, whatever it is. And I will go through those. The second thing is you bring in peace. I don't know if you've ever been out somewhere and it's just you're all alone and it's plants. It's so freaking peaceful to be out there. It's like, ah, like the air smells good. You feel good being around them. You know, they're happy when they're doing their thing out there. Uh, so it brings about peace in your space. It definitely aids in health. Like I said, they're air purifiers, a lot of them. Aloe, which I have over here, you can rub that on your skin if you get any kind of insect bite or burns. Um, I put down happiness because I think that it makes people happy to be in green. Green is the heart chakra color. So the more that you're around green things, the more you're activating that heart chakra. Feeling more love. That's the vibration of plants, right? They're, they're like totally content and perfect on their own. And so there's no negative plant. There are plants that have poison toxins in them, but even that they're not a negative plant. They have a purpose for something. Uh, so I, I feel like it brings more love inside and out with the plants and within yourself. The probably the biggest thing, because I use plants a lot in like abundance and prosperity spells, is that it lets you see nature's abundance. So if you're one of the people that like have been drawn into the the whole world is ending, the oceans are dying, like the forests are all dying, we're all going to die soon because we have nothing left of Earth. When you bring plants into your space, you remember that life is abundant and it'll keep pushing through, you know, it's going to keep recycling itself. It's going to keep propagating itself. 
And lastly, for me, it's protecting a part of nature that otherwise wouldn't be there. So by propagating these plants, spreading seeds in random people's yards, <laughs> just so that new stuff can grow, you're, you're also helping nature survive and exist. So protecting for me is propagating. If I can grow more plants, that means the earth is really not dying and there's more plants in our spaces. Um, the thing that I hope that you get out of this is understanding that each plant has a vibration for you to use, either just having it in your space to grow it or cutting it and putting it into your spells. The other, well, I guess I'll show you, but when, we are, when we're taking from nature or taking from a plant, we normally thank it or have like a way of showing gratitude towards the plant as we clip it. Uh, I have some that I'll do some clippings on. So that's the other part of like, you're not just gardening, you're being really intentional and spiritual with growing your plants because you're thanking them and you're having this relationship with them. For me, <laughs> when I didn't have as many, all my plants had a name, every single one of them. And it was usually something to do with the type of plant it was, or it rhymed with it, you know, like Betty Basil. So they were just, I don't know if it's a male or a female plant. I just gave it a name that made sense to me so that I could address it. Uh, so that's how you can have relationships with them. Sitting, you know, they say sit and talk to your plants. That's really true because when we breathe out carbon dioxide, monoxide, whichever one that is, there are people more sciencey that know that, you're breathing in the oxygen that they release. It is a mutually beneficial relationship and they're never gonna hurt your feelings ever. They're never gonna tell you you have bad breath. Um, so I, I do thought something called pet poke and fluff, and I'll show you what that looks like because when I walk by some of them, like this is my friend guy, I pet him, I will fluff him and get out anything that's dead will fall off. And then I just kind of poke around to make sure that any new growth has space. Like here's a tangle. It's almost like brushing his hair, just kind of giving him the air he needs. This is a, the fern is an air plant. So I guess that makes sense. What did you call it? Poke? What did you say? <laughs> Pet poke and fluff. <laughs> Pet poke and fluff. Only appropriate with plants, not people, not animals. Um, okay, so that that is like the beginning relationships of the plants. Now to introduce them all. The easiest one for anybody to grow, I would say, is definitely aloe. This guy is jam packed. He's been in the same pot for two years. And the reason he loves it is because he is jam packed. I can repot him at any time. He has a ton of little babies in there. Uh, I call them kikis because in Hawaii, every plant baby is a kiki. But I brought one in so I could show you when you have an aloe, this is about propagation for this plant. So I've got like one little pup. I'm pretty sure they're called pups. You have a pup like this. All you're gonna do is pull your plant all the way out and you'll see all of the little all of his little roots. You're just gonna break them apart from his mom plant. It's time to leave the nest, little guy. And you can't, aloes are really strong plants. It's hard to hurt them unless you break them off where the, um, where the actual leaves are. But once you get down into this root ball base, you're just taking them apart, ripping through some of the, uh, the roots on it. And voila. You can put this guy into his own little pot and you know what he will do? He will make lots of babies. So funny story about every single aloe I own. It came from one plant that somebody threw out on the side of the road. <laughs> they just tossed him out there. And I'm like, I drove by him for a week and he was still alive. And I thought, well, he's not dying. Obviously he's like, he can sustain himself. So that was in 2015. And now I have many, many parts of my yards. I've given them away. I have them in lots of pots around my house. Like they propagate really fast. So if you get an aloe, you only ever have to buy one, just one aloe. So that, that's propagating the aloe. For his care, they don't like full sun. They can burn. Uh, they love to stay dry, but they wanna be hot. They like warmer areas. So if your window doesn't get like direct sunlight beaming down on it, you're good as long as he's got plenty of light, not necessarily sun, but just light, and then um, heat and a little bit of water. He's one of those plants, he likes to stay dry. Originally from Africa. See, I'm already getting off my card. Originally from Africa. Um, so I do have these cards that I made up, you guys, and if you don't want to take notes, I plan on posting them in the meeting after I'm done. 
I made them with the magical properties, spell work. Can't tell if I'm getting that in the frame. And then how to use them. So aloe is really good for protection. It's, um, it's a healing plant, of course. Sorry, admitting somebody. And then uh, it's lucky. So you can use it for like prosperity or whatever. Aloe does not do well being dried out. You can buy aloe powder, but it takes like a lot of aloe plants to make that powder. Uh, if you want to put it dry into a spell, you can clip it up. Mama, I have some little things over there. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is what aloe turns into dried. It looks like little tiny crusties. It's just, it turns into nothing. So if you want to do a dried aloe for your spells, um, it's totally fine. You can use a leaf because the leaf will actually just evaporate over time when you clip it. Uh, these do not regrow like this, so you can't stick them in the ground like other succulents, but that would be for love, wealth, protection, peacemaking, and banishing. I'm so sorry. No, no, that's basil. Uh, yeah, scratch. Sorry, the card was on the other card. <laughs> Magical properties, protection, healing, luck. Yeah. Spell work, health, beauty, wealth, protection. Yeah. So Cleopatra used to use this, which I thought that was just super awesome. There's actually um, hieroglyphics of the aloe plant in Egypt. So this was, you know, because it's from Africa, this was something that's been used for a really long time for healing and for beauty. And then we also have association element, water, planet, moon. Yes. So any of your succulents or things that you find uh, that have a lot of water in them are going to be associated with moon and emotions. So the two that I have for tonight are aloe and just random succulents like jade and stuff. Um, so that they follow that and they put off a high frequency of emotional support. Um, they usually guard you from distressing situations planted around your house. They stop people who have like bad tempers because it reflects that back at them like a water mirror. Um, so for the, for how to use, I put grow by your doors or your windows that can be inside or out. Um, if you live in colder climates, obviously keep it in a pot so you can bring it in and to use it in, in um, spells, you can slice it, dry it and ground it down like with these little bits or use the flakes like that. And then for healing, it's rubbing on your skin and hair. Um, aloe is edible. I am not telling anybody to eat it. I grow aloe that I bought, that I got off the side of the road. I don't know what species it is. And aloe is like aloe vera, but there's a hundred kinds. So I really can't say what's safe to consume versus if you rub it on your skin, your hair, your toes, you're going to be fine. Um, so that is aloe. Okay. Let's move this puppy out of here. Okay. Got that one. Yep. Next is probably my most favorite because it's on pizza. Basil. I love basil. It's so easy to grow. When you just touch it and fluff it and poke it, you smell everything. It's a, uh, it's actually an herb of love. So <laughs> like, that's why people love pizza. That basil like draws you in and you become, you know, obsessed. But with basil, um, this is a super old herb. I'm going to read the back so that I can remember what I wanted to tell you. It's been being used for over 5,000 years. And one of the crazy stories about it is it, it smells so good it does it wards off witches i love this right so like if you have basil around you it's royalty witches can't come into your space and then in other places in europe it's like this is the witch's herb anybody poor they they were painted with a basil plant next to them so there's people who feel like it's a royal plant and then there's others who like it's for everybody it's down to the absolute most common person and was painted that way a long time ago um the smell of basil can actually change people's moods so it has uh the chemicals in its smell that can make people happier crazy enough so if you find that you're around somebody toxic at work that is just mean or always in a bad mood bring basil in and be like, smell, this basil smells great. Smell this, like trick them into smelling it and see if their mood can change. Um, I try to get my sister to do it, but it lasts like 10 minutes and then she's back bitching and complaining. So it works for a minute. It does. What's it changes down here. That's time. 
I just oh, tucked okay. some time in the bottom of this. Okay. This grows in my kitchen window. So, um, all right. So it does change your mood. It actually gives people confidence as well. And the thing that with basil and it's growing, so the care for basil is super easy. Grab me the little glass with basil in it. Uh, that one over there. Yeah. If you have basil like this and you take this hard stem, so there's this part of it that's like super brown and then it turns green. So this is called the wood of the plant. You can actually make wands out of it if it gets really thick or, or you can make a small wand with it. But this green part, if you cut it anywhere along this green part and stick it in water, you're going to have it immediately just root up. That's what it does in water. It'll just turn into a root and then you can stick this plant into another pot and you have propagated your own basil. You do not have to go buy another plant. Did you buy it from seed or did you buy a starter plant? I bought a starter plant. Okay. Um, this one is actually pesto basil. It's not sweet basil. Sweet basil has like a bigger leaf. Uh, all are appropriate for spells. They're interchangeable because basil is one of those herbs like rosemary and things good for like everything. Um, the magical properties of basil are, it's definitely used for love in relationships. Okay. It's wealth. If you tuck a piece of basil in with your wallet or your coins or your dollar bills, remember when we did that? Um, it brings forth more wealth. So because it's an abundant bloomer, that's one of the things that it does. It's a protection plant because of the smells. It keeps angry people away. Um, so I think this is funny and I don't take it seriously. So you guys take it as you want. It's used in exorcisms. I don't know how much I believe in that, but, and also the witch's flying serum that is not also real because it calls for lots of animal parts, not real. But they say with basil and getting courage, I think that it's the feeling of flying or euphoria and happiness. So I think of it more as, um, what's that word I'm looking for? Like symbolic of flying, not actual, not literal flying. I would say it makes you feel good. Like you have wings like a Red Bull for spell work on this, <laughs> like a Red Bull, <laughs> like a Red Bull. It gives you wings. <laughs> um, for spell work on this, this is again, love, wealth, protection, peacemaking and banishing. So banishment comes from uh, burning basil. If you want, if you really feel like there's a lot of negativity in a space or around somebody, clothes, articles, something, um, burn basil, and that helps get rid of any negative energy. So that's the banishing part of it. Basil is super easy to use. You can rub it on your skin and walk around smelling like that all day. It makes people happy, like I said. So everywhere you go, you'll spread happiness. You can leave the cuttings in the jar um, to just place around your house for the smell. Carry it in your wallet. In other countries, they actually hang sprigs above their door um, the door seal and the window seals and by registers to bring in wealth and prosperity and like good luck. It's sort of like a good luck charm. Um, and of course, if you like the smell in your bath, I, I think it would make me hungry in my bath, but it can definitely be put in your bath. You can eat it. Basil is safe hundred percent as long as it doesn't have pesticides on it. So that is basil. Oh, its association element is fire, which is the only fire element I think I have tonight. And the planet it's associated with is Mars. So Mars and fire for basil. Really easy to care for. You, they can get all the way dried out. This is more about their care, but you can let them get like super wilted, put water in their pot and all of a sudden they come back to life. Like they're very easy to care for because if you think you've killed it and you give it water, it springs back to life. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> this guy has dried out so many times being on my kitchen window seal. Um, and then I just give him water and he is fine again. So he's kind of like, how long are you gonna last? Basil plants only last about a year. So if you get yours to last a year, you're doing really, really good. After that, they start to lose their ability to regenerate their seeds. So you might have to, you know, return them to the earth. All right, so that was basil. Next is fluffy fern, fluffy, fluffy fern. So the first thing that I always notice with fern is yes, it looks like a feather, but I want you to picture, like to remember what this really represents is, these are all little tiny dollar bills on this plant. 
So this is a prosperity plan. Every single prosperity or wealth or money spell I've ever done includes a fern. You can just clip it. Um, the great thing about them is they don't hold a lot of moisture, so they're not going to like rot in a spell bag or in a jar. They're really just going to like dry up on their own. They'll be totally fine. So that's helpful. Where same basil, if you just do the leaf and not the stem, it'll just dry up as well. But you can clip it and do your do your spells like that. You don't have to wait for drying time on it. Um, all right, I need the little babies for that's in the white pot. So fern is a little different for propagation. And, and sometimes they look really bad after this one frond only lasts so long and then it dies. So new little babies have to form inside there. And if you, when you pull out your fern from its pot to propagate, it has like a ton of roots and kind of like craziness with it. And inside here, if I was to pull it all apart, but I don't want to, cause this is a, a newly planted guy. Inside here, there's actually all these little bulbs. So you've got like these little, looks like potatoes from here, but they're, uh, they kind of look like they'd be clear and tapioca like. So you can pull any of these bulbs out of this fern. Little fern, you're so fluffy, you gotta go over here. Pull any of these bulbs out of the fern and each one will make a new plant. As long as it has a little bit of a root on it, this little wiry root, and a little tiny bit of green. So like this guy has one little frond trying to start from it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but just a tiny little thing. And he will grow into a big plant like this because they just, they have like a root, they reproduce. They have a root, they reproduce. And they just do that through the whole pot. And one of the reasons why ferns die in pots is because they've used up all that soil to turn themselves into these little bulbs. And that's what causes them to die. They suffocate inside there. So that's why you can pull them out, break them up, split them into different containers, and then they'll grow new ferns. Do you just put them in the dirt? Yeah, straight into the dirt. You don't put these in water? No, these don't go in water. These are only into dirt. Um, and the Mr. Mom, ferns, you can soak ferns as long as they have really good drainage, but they love to be misted. So they really like hot, humid climates. So if you put them in your bathroom, if you put them in your kitchen near the sink where like spray could sort of get on them, that's where they're the happiest. They don't like a ton of direct sunlight, but they're happy in warmer, bright places. Um, and they're really happy when they get a lot of water. Like that's how they thrive. They're a little bit like an air plant planted in soil. That, that's how they are to me. They, that's what they act like. Cause they can, he could survive like this for a couple of weeks. Uh, and then finally die. So he can kind of like be on his own without the dirt, as long as he's getting moisture. All right, so the, the magical properties of ferns, health and wealth go together. So anytime you see a plant that's got like a health or a wealth, those are interchangeable because health is a type of wealth. So fern is health and wealth. It's also a very lucky plant. This is a, a plant associated with like fairies and mystical stuff. So finding patches of fern um, is very lucky. Carrying it on you can bring luck and good circumstances. And then lastly, also associated with fairies, it's a protection plant because where it grows, um, that's kind of, it's kind of like a, <laughs> people can disappear in the fern patches. It's supposed to be because of fairies and sprites, but it's protection for them. It's protection for the outside elements. So you can use it for yourself to protect yourself when you're going out into the woods or you're uh, traveling. It's a good protection um, plant. For spell work, that's what I put down was protection and health. Um, I think I told you guys when my husband got COVID, this is one of the things that definitely went into the spell jar for that when he was admitted into the hospital because it's an air plant, so it helps with the air in any chest, lung area stuff. Um, and the, they say if you burn fern, which I don't, uh, it causes the rain to fall. So anybody who wants to feel froggy and mess with the weather, try burning a fern and seeing if rain starts. I don't, I have not done that. I learned not to mess with weather a long time ago. Fern can grow anywhere near your house. Uh, it can grow inside by your doors, any of the rooms in your house, as long as it has a little bit of light. It can take really, really low light situations and it can take bright light. Direct sunlight, again, is a no go. Um, yeah, carry it with you. It's super easy to carry it. What's the planet? It. 
Oh, uh, the elements. The association with it is air. Uh, a way to remember that is fern looks like a feather. Feather represents air. And the planet is Mercury. So Mercury is the planet of communication. So that fern would be all about that voice, the lungs speaking, things traveling through the air. Yeah. All right, nerd fact. The ferns that we have around today are 70 million years old. 70 million years. And the oldest fern recorded is from 400 million years ago. So I thought that was super cool. I'm like, been using these same ferns for a long time. And what I always tell you guys, everything had to start from one, right? So this is like descendants of all those ferns from wherever. I mean, people migrated with them, planted them. They got put into stores. They kept having babies and repeating the process. And now we're lucky enough to continue to have ancestors of those first ferns brought over. Um, the association with fairies, you guys will find that a lot with ferns. Yeah. Okay. Fern is done. We're on to ivy. Ivy is one of those crazy plants that there's a million types of ivies, you guys. Find the one you like. They all have really cool different shapes. I have one that's a that's a star. It's got the five points, and I have one that's got like it looks like a dinosaur foot. It's like three, but it looks like a um what's the Jurassic Park dinosaur? Tyrannosaurus Rex footprint, you know, in the mud, it looks just like that. All right, and ferns. Ferns are damn expensive. I don't know if anybody's looked out there, but I don't know why they charge $15 for a tiny fern plant. So I'm gonna teach you how to propagate it yourself so you don't have to pay for them. No, you mean ivy. We just- Oh shit, I'm sorry. We ivy, just love ivy. ferns. I meant ivy. Ferns are also expensive for no reason. I don't know why. You know, dig them up on the ground. Um, I did that and it's really <laughs> doing well. I stole it from the park. You propagated it, Mom. I propagated it from the park. You propagated it. And it's doing very well, but it probably needs to be transplanted. Okay, this is English ivy. They're all called English ivy. Um, they have different shapes to their leaves. And this is the one that has the five, the five points. And of course, I like that because it's a little star. I think it's so cute. Uh, he's doing really well. He's about a year old. He, he has the long vines. So when these vines get pretty long, you know what you do? You give them a little haircut. Let's show them the haircut. Haircut time. So same thing with the basil plant. You clip that off, put them in water, and you're going to get a lot of roots. This guy has been dying for me to repot him, but I just haven't because, you know, procrastination is so much fun. I don't know. <laughs> he still looks good in the vase, so he's, he's doing okay. He's not going to die. Um, that's propagation, super easy. So you can't stick this in the ground and it likes low light to medium light. It does not like a lot of direct sunlight. It'll burn. You'll get lots of brown spots all over it that's burning. And ivy, this beautiful, wonderful plant, its magical properties are protection because it builds a shield around things. So imagine ivy growing up a wall. It literally shields things. Uh, it has the healing properties because it's an air cleanser. And then it has to do with love. So there's a lot of debate around Christianity using ivy and people in weddings using ivy. So you'll notice a lot of ivy patterns in lace and gowns and things uh, on cups, goblets. There's, they, this is again, one of those plants that people said, if you grow ivy, witches can't enter your house. And then other people said, if you find where the ivy grows, you'll find the witch's house. So there's two sides of the fence. Um, whichever you choose to believe. Uh, but ivy has the distinct pleasure of being the love plant for weddings and brides. They should carry it, hang on to it, gift it to a bride. It's good luck for her marriage. It For spell work, a lot of people only use ivy for protection and love and protection or protection and love and then luck in love. So that's really the only time that I see ivy being used in spells is for the love stuff. Um, it heals your self-image and it also brings about happiness. So being around ivy, it vibrates that like self-love feeling as well. You can use it by just carrying a leaf. Same thing, you can just snip one off, stick it in your pocket and carry it around. Um, it's grown, one of the reasons people grow it is to protect against natural disasters. And it makes sense because if you had ivy growing on your house, it actually makes things stronger 
while the old houses, it made things stronger because it held it together if there was a storm versus now it like peels all your paint off and <laughs> chips away at your, whatever that outside coating is on people's houses. You remember that stuff that you had? Like it was plaster. Or yeah, I had ivy all over a house I bought and I loved it for that. It was beautiful, it was beautiful. Um, so having it around protects you against disasters. Um, and the other thing I say about it is ivy and holly often go together. This is due to uh, the oak king and the holly king. If you don't know the stories, it's that is okay. It's just something to reference. It's the fight between light and darkness. So holly and, and ivy go together because of that. They're, one is a, a light to the dark. It's the yin and yang of each other. The association element with ivy is definitely water. It is technically a swampy plant. Um, and its planet is Saturn. So that threw me. I didn't know that Saturn was a water association planet. The other, the last thing that like old pagans used to use ivy for is they used the, um, the vines to bind the last harvest. So this was particularly good during like Luna Sal, Mabone, Samhain, and Yule. This is what the wreaths were made out of. This is what... Um, original Christmas decorations were sort of strung into. Um, yeah, so it's an evergreen plant. So it's it's definitely a Yule time plant. People love ivy for that. Okay, that's ivy. Next is mint, way more fun. Who likes mojitos? I like mojitos. I love mojitos. Who likes mojitos <laughs> with your hand? Well, yeah, mint is, uh, a long time ago, I got a mint and it's all over in my yard. So the one in my house is not doing well because I don't use it. I pick the ones out of my yard because they get fat. This is, I love this. This is the, them. this is the size of my mint that grows outside in the ground. And then these are the leaves that will grow inside. So still usable, but very different in the pots. Um, mint, mint is one of those plants that also has a ton of work you can do with it. It's a excuse me, it does everything. Its magical properties are money. So not just wealth, but this is like cash monies now. Um, travel, protection with travel, healing. It is used in lust spells. So some people get a hold of it and use it for lust. And then again, take it or leave it, exorcisms. I don't know. I, I have not made up my mind on that. For spell work, it's all of the things that I listed above, but also banishing. So it would be money, travel, health, protection, banishing. Does anybody, well, banishing spells are more about stopping people from doing stuff and putting a wall between you. So like my symbol for banishing, you'll see when I upload the cards, it looks like a sideways division sign. There's a like a wall and then two dots on either side, and that's for create separation and don't let these two things come together. But you use um, you use mint for, you grow it around your house for protection. If you don't like snakes, all mints repel snakes, just so you know. Um, you carry it for the money, like put it in your purse. It, cannot, it dries really well. You can literally slide it next to a credit card and it'll just dry. Um, carrying it during travel, you can make mint water, which is only good for like three to four days because once you squish it and put it in water, it will start to get a film. But you can spray mint water in places if you're not into burning stuff. And that actually clears out negative energy as well. Putting it in your bath, that's pretty amazing. Any of the spring baths, like mint is so refreshing in that. Um, leaving it on your altar, it's always good to just grow the plants, right? And you can bring the plant to your altar if that's what you want to work with. You don't actually have to take it apart or do anything with it. You can just have it with you at your altar for the vibration. The associated element with it is air and the planet is Mercury again. So air and Mercury. And I think, yeah, I can't brought this over, but it's the same thing with basil and who else did we do already? Um, basil. Ivy. Uh, basil and ivy. Yeah, clip some off, stick it in water and make yourself a hundred mint plants. Mint, if I took this out, you guys, you'd be like, um, maybe I should. You'd be amazed at like the roots that mint will get. It climbs through everything and it just creates these huge, huge roots. 
I don't know if I'm getting close enough. It creates these huge roots that just keep digging deeper and deeper. And so it'll spiral all the way around and it wants to break free. So I set this guy outside so that he could try to grow into the garden. And then all I would do is clip him. So if you were to put like a pot next to him full of dirt, he would have one little uh, root grow over to the next pot and then you could just clip it and that one would grow in that pot. So that's how you can propagate this guy just in dirt. It works really well. I watered him today. He's very moist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. With mint, I think I went through that. Yes. Okay. So we have to move yeah. something. I'm going to put mint back. Mint okay. is going back. Okay. I think I got everything with him. Okay. Mint smells amazing all the time, just like basil. Do I need to get your towel? Anytime you poke it or touch it, uh, I got one. You're gonna smell like the mint. You can rub it. On it's amazing. Yourself. You can just smell it. The whole room <laughs> smells like it smells really good. <laughs> that I think that's part of the essence of having the plants around you is what they can do for the aromas inside your house. How a they pop, can. It's apothecary, isn't it? Is that the aromas or maybe it's aromatherapy but i'm thinking <laughs> it's aromatherapy of. live aromatherapy yeah um i know there's a lot of dirt next is pothos so you guys have probably seen this one everywhere it's probably one of the first plants that i learned i've been growing pothos since 1974. <laughs> unfortunately it's not this pothos plant but it is no it was one but pothos is the one where you see people hang it on everything and it can grow across an entire like room. The one I gave you. It is the one you gave me. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's grown crazy. <laughs> yeah. They grow really fast. And the wonderful thing about pothos is if you see these little spikes coming off of him, those are roots. At any point, you can cut him right here and stick that guy in the dirt and you'll have a whole new plant. So it doesn't take much for pothos to be propagated. So he's like... I feel like all these are easy, but he's the fastest and easiest. You can also put him in water. Cat brought up his water container. When you put them into water, they just get a different kind of looking root. So this one's all fuzzy and it does the exact same thing. There's no wrong or right way. This just gives you a, a bigger root before you uh, plant it. So this him. one, this one here that she's got was a clipping that I gave her. So I cut a plant got his roots got him a really good root system super and then put him in dirt and gave him to her and he's taken off yeah he's he likes it he's happy yeah and i i have neglected this guy several times i guess i should get back in frame i've neglected this guy several times between not watering him he doesn't get a ton of sun that's one of the reasons why pothos is so easy to grow to just bring in the aesthetics of it um because if you forget to water him He's fine. Overwatering any of these plants is bad, but underwatering them, you're doing good. So if you're a light waterer, these, these are definitely plants that are more for you. With pothos, the magical properties of this guy are wealth, protection. He's another binding one because he's a, he's, they used to call him the devil's ivy. So he's like a type of ivy. Um, so he does well for binding spells and he also dispels negativity. So his long tendrils alleviate situations. Imagine the excess energy running out through his tendrils everywhere and dispelling it, like letting it run dry. Um, for spell work, it's the same thing, prosperity, protection, and binding. And you can just grow him in any room to absorb negativity. That's what this guy is really known for, the banishing of negativity and then just clearing it out of the space. The way that people use it in spells, which I've never done and I haven't seen, but there are definitely spells out there for it. You take the hard pieces here, this piece, not the leaves, and you're able to cut this up. So this is what has the power and all of the growth in it. There's lots of different places where he's trying to root. This is where his energy comes from. And so this is what people use in spells for binding. That's what they would um, clip up and then put into like a satchel. So that is pothos. Yeah, devil's ivy because he's hard to kill. Pothos can also, um, if you read about it on the internet, you can see that it comes from um, India-ish area, Asia over there, and grew like in a swampy area. Oh, because I didn't do this element yet. But in subtropic climates like ours, well, in Florida, 
they can become super invasive, just like kudzu. I don't know if everybody knows what kudzu is. It just it takes over everything. It literally <laughs> grows over every single tree, bush, flower, it doesn't matter. So because of that, pothos in some areas, if it's let wild, um, can do damage to natural habitat. So we have one next door and I swear to God, the leaves are like this. They're, they're, they're like this big. They're so huge. They look like elephant ears. If you know what that plant looks like. I mean, yeah. they're massive. We, and the vine on them has got to be, I mean, it's, it's got to be that. Thick, so that, yeah, it's yeah. huge, thick, like you can't break it. It's like a jungle, <laughs> like a jungle plant. It reminds you of Jurassic Park, like how the yeah. plants are so big and you feel puny. Yeah. It's that leaf, but the size of my body, like it's crazy, crazy big. And it, they climb up the trees and the fences in my yard. I don't let them go anywhere else, but, um, you know, all the pretty people. cool and low I mean, maintenance, very low, very low maintenance, very low maintenance. They survive through like everything, everything, everything. It is an evergreen, so you can uh, keep it outside and it'll come back. Um, just like the ivy, they're both evergreens where they stay green all the time. And so pothos, because it does come from a swampy area also, it's a water element plant and its planet is also Saturn, like ivy. And if you guys aren't getting these, I'm gonna post all these little note cards afterwards in the pictures so that you can see each one. Um, next is rosemary. Rosemary's in a little blue cup. Another plant that's amazing to just, you touch it to and smell you it. smell it. <laughs> yeah. So this oh is- Oh my gosh. This is probably my favorite- it smells so good. To rub because Rosemary leaves actually have a ton of oil on them. So if you just, if you do this, you can feel it afterwards. Uh, it's effervescent, so it helps with anything like congestion, your lungs. So it's definitely a healing plant, obviously all edible. Um, it is also like the basil where when you take cuttings from this, you have the woody part of it. And then you have like this newer growth that's sort of way more green and soft you're gonna to wanna to cut in that soft green area to, before you put it in water. If you do the woody stuff, it doesn't root very well. It might root, but it doesn't root very well. Um, and I was just gonna- I need to propagate mine. Like here's, these are the woody parts that I'm cutting off now. And it's just something, you know, this, this one just decided he wasn't gonna make it anymore. And so this has a ton of smell to it, it can be used for spells. And then this little guy here that's brand new growth and green, I could put him in water and he would turn into a brand new little plant. Now it would take him like five years to become, you know, any kind of decent size, but he can absolutely be turned into another plant. The magical properties of rosemary are like vast. Protection, healing, it's a calming herb. So this is a bath one for sure. Putting it under your pillow for sleeping. Um, it also brings clarity. So like psychic type stuff, looking inside yourself. When you burn it, it's a purification herb. So that clears out negativity and stuff from spaces. And it's also a love plant, which of course, right? It's one of those ones you smell it and you're just like, oh, I can't concentrate on anything else. It's just the, the aroma of it. So the only thing within the magical properties that I didn't put that you can use in spell work is rosemary protects houses against theft. Uh, and by hanging rosemary, dried rosemary around your house, it stops like theft in your area, within your house, your car. So the rosemary plant, that's one of its vibrations is the anti-theft plant, which I think is super cute. Like I never saw it in that light before, but um, people definitely burn it for cleansing, uh, purify baths, sleep with it underneath their pillow. That's sort of the spell work with it. Um, hanging it around your house, just growing it naturally is totally fine. That brings out the vibrations in the space that you keep it in. Uh, the other thing for health that it does is the healing part is like, it's said to revive youth, but um, it also aids against depression or helps heal with depression. Anybody who's feeling uh, super negative or down, Rosemary is said to lift their spirits and uh, dispel the depression that's going on. It's a transformative herb because it is the, its element is fire and its planet is sun, which we know is not a planet, but that's its association. Uh, so having Rosemary around, super helpful, like all spells can use Rosemary. It's a, 
It's an alternative for frankincense. If anybody wants to use frankincense, and knows that it's ridiculously expensive also. Um, okay, that's rosemary. Yes. All right, I only have two plants left. I've got- Did you show them this? Oh, the water. Yeah, Sorry. so you take, take, take off the green part of it though. Yeah, the propagation part. So these are just its little, its little white roots. And I did this about a week ago because I didn't have anything rooting right now to show you guys that that's how fast it can grow roots and you can put it right into the soil and that's three new little plants. You know, at Lowe's, that would have been four to six dollars each. And for me, free. So I like that. I like being able to propagate and then I give them away. Um, the snake plant, which, yes. You, have a snake, you want this guy? I want that guy because I just have a little guy. So we have I can't. snake plant. This is also known as mother-in-law's mother tongue. <laughs> tongue. <laughs> because it's sharp like a sword. Yeah. Daggers. Um, I can't show you guys my big plant because they're like super tall. But if you keep them in small vases, they don't grow to be super like really big. You have to put them into a bigger vase in order to get them to grow really tall. So small vases keep plants small. Larger vases allow them to grow to your ceiling. Uh, the cool thing about snake plants, I just I just pulled these out of my neighbor's yard earlier today. Uh, it's an empty lot. Nobody lives there, so it's not technically stealing. It's 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 propagating. It's propagating. It's acquiring. Like he's not using it, um, and I don't even think he planted them. I think somebody threw out their house plant, and it just decided it was going to grow all over the place. So I wanted to pull it up so I could show you guys their root system, they grow on a long tube and then they pop up with these plants. So on this end, you can see where the little white part is. That's where I broke it off from its, the other piece of it. And this guy will continue to grow. This is one that he broke off from a place, but same thing, he'll continue to grow. All I gotta do is pop them in some dirt. And then I've got this tiny, this is a huge piece of tube. And I don't know why this is so large. And this is how tiny the little plant is on it. But if I pop him into a pot, he's going to grow new plants as well. So that's one way is to pull it, uh, pull it straight out and break it off from its tube. It'll just keep shooting out of the tubes, little new plants. The other thing to do is if you lose a leaf, like this leaf was just laying on the ground, but he's already got little roots coming out of him. If I put him in the ground, he will propagate. Do I have my big cutters? Let me see the big cutters. So this is just another variation with the yellow around it, the halo effect. These guys have a leaf. Now I didn't do this, but take this guy right here, stick him in a little bit of water, like where the rosemary is. See how low the rosemary water is? Yeah, so the rosemary water just has like, see how little the water is? And you put him in like this, you don't want to submerge him too much, but just a little bit in the water and he will grow roots out and he will turn into a plant. Like this guy just wants to grow. He doesn't care how. So that's the snake plants propagation. And for caring from him, you can have him in direct sunlight. You can have him in total darkness. They grow everywhere, anywhere. They don't care. And they're going to come back. So if the leaves all fall down, the tube is still underground and will definitely come back. And if you put them in your yard, <laughs> they will like take over a whole section. So they will propagate and make more and more, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You can go from having a couple plants to having a field of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's an exaggeration. But a good corner of your yard will be taken up by them, especially after a rainy season or a spring. You'll get 10, 12, 15 new plants. So... They grow really fast. Um, the magical properties of the snake plant is protection because of the sword-like feature of it, okay? Health, uh, it's, this is like one of the only plants that can clear formaldehyde from our air, which I don't really know why we would have formaldehyde in our air, but I guess we do. Um, so it's a really good air purifier. It provides clarity, so it's one of the plants that, uh, because of its shape, it it pokes through the veil of like our world to the spiritual world. So with it provides like the insight and the clarity and wanting you to meditate. Purification, of course, because the air, and then peace. So being shaped like 
a knife and it being peaceful is because um, this can actually absorb radiation. So that's cell phones, you know, I was thinking computers, like all internet stuff. So having this around your house actually stops the emissions of your electronics going through the air. So that's how it brings about peace. With spell work, this is best known in defensive magic. So um, say somebody's plotting against you and you want to stop them. This creates chaos in the plotter's life, or it at least puts roadblocks up for them. So that's one of the things that uh, people do with it the most is use it for defensive magic to stop things they know are coming, like threats or whatever. Uh, of course, the health benefits for it in spell work and then using it around meditation, it stops other thoughts from penetrating your energy field. So this is another one that can grow anywhere, grow it by your doors or your windows. It's really fast growing. It does not care if you forget to water it, it loves that. Um, and it propagates really, really fast. It's associated with the air element and the planet Venus, which is super interesting, right? The other air planet was Mercury for communication. This is Venus. So this is going to be more about yourself, internal stuff, protecting yourself. Um, so that is snake plant. Isn't Venus love too? Venus is love, yeah. Um, so there were two other names in case anybody is curious, but... This is called St. George's Sword to people of faith. And then to indigenous people, it's called Tiger's Tongue. So I thought that was pretty cool. I was like, never heard that before, Tiger's Tongue, but snake plant. Yeah. All right, lastly is succulents. I know that succulents, that's a huge, huge like area. I mean, technically aloe is a succulent, but for the succulents that you can get at the grocery store and that you can see like Lowe's and Home Depot, um, I have like a variety pot. Let me get this guy back here. This is, this is just several succulents all together, but they grow, you know, they can get very leggy. Like this is a whole type of jade. This is just something called the common succulent. This is another jade, a money, a money jade. But these guys are all just growing together in this little pot. They like to be mixed up like that because each of them takes a different nutrient from the soil. So it benefits them to have the variety. Um, succulents are easy to grow, easy to grow if you do not want to water stuff. Again, the little spritzer mom had. Succulents love this guy, especially if you're in, um, cooler areas because with hot areas or if you have a fan in your room the soil will dry out more which is great so you can spray it with more water but if you live in an area where it's not drying out like let it go for a month before watering it and then you can give it a good soaking and leave it alone leave it alone again but the reason that succulents are so awesome is because you can have a piece that just breaks off and then it's little roots if you just leave it alone it'll start growing I need something behind that. The little roots, my black shirt kind of does it. Can you tiny, see the tiny roots on that? <laughs> okay, so leaving this guy alone on the ground, he fell off one of my succulents outside and he'll grow roots. Then on like the longer ones, this is a little Kiki, little baby. And then he's got his own little roots. And all you gotta do is leave them right on the ground like that in dirt and they will, they will plant themselves. You don't have to do anything. So here's like an even tinier one with its little roots out. And it's a little tiny baby growing, but that's what they do all over my yard because I have a ton of them because I'm going to teach you guys a trick about Lowe's and Home Depot. This is propagation. When they come and spray down on the plants, they often knock off leaves, but they do not clean underneath the shelves. So you will have leaves that already have roots in a plant laying on the ground. And I feel like that's just free territory. It's not a pot. They really it's, need somebody to clean them up. I mean, I'm so, hoping. You know, like if you go behind and pick up leaves off the ground and put them in your purse, it's not really stealing. It's like helping them clean up. Yeah. And you're helping the plant live because otherwise they're just going to kill it. So I figured, you know, I'm they're going to sweep it into the dumpster or the big sad. drain. Yeah. So I do go by the succulent area and if there are little leaves laying out that already have a plant or a root, I tuck it in my purse. Or if I'm buying a plant, I just set it right on the other plant and nobody says anything. They're like, 
Oh, that's different. I got a dry spot in my throat from talking to you. Because you've Sorry. been talking for like <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> okay. With succulents, um, this is another water plant. So its element is water and the planet associated with it is the moon. So we're getting into like emotions, the inward stuff, emotions around insecurity, self-love, relationships, you know, this is all internal. So the magical properties that succulents have are healing. And that's with all the issues that I just listed. It always deals with emotions, no matter what you're no matter what you're going for, it's going to be the emotions surrounding that thing. So if you're trying to add it to a prosperity spell because you have negative emotions around money, that would be one of the things you would add that in as like, here's how I deal with my emotions. That's the part for it. Uh, it brings about patience because they do not want you to touch them a lot. You have to leave them alone. So for people who are like, they need to be in control of everything, succulents are there to teach you a lesson. Patience. They bring about good fortune. So they're definitely a feng shui plant and they bring about the energy of like organization. They are a water representation of the lotus flower. They have that same structure. Um, in spell work, people use the living plant. You don't ever uh, take a leaf and let it dry out. You'll wanna have the living plant around as your spell work, but that's for personal growth, personal healing or internal healing with feelings. They're great for meditation. They create serene areas where it's like to be still. Uh, psychic awareness is another thing because they have so much water going through them and they absorb that moon power. So they bring about psychic awareness. And then they're also used for love and prosperity, not necessarily like wealth, but prosperity in your situations or life, like things going along your way. That was the good fortune of the magical properties. Um, Growing multiples in a pot is awesome. They kind of like to be crowded. Uh, you always remember, keep these plants alive for your spells. If you're letting them dry out or die, that's more like a, you're a releasing or you're trying to get rid of a thing, you know? So I, you could do that if maybe your emotion was like a lot of anger or fear. You know, you could uh, write on top of the succulent leaf and then let watch it wither. And with that, it's like the emotion goes away too. Uh, keep it on or near your altar if you want to work with the energy of this plant. Yeah. So when I do spells for these guys, I make a satchel. Did I bring a okay, that little guy? A satchel. When I say satchel, I'm talking about these little tiny baggies that are just like super uh, almost see-through, really, really sheer cloth. But I do my spell work and I put everything in a satchel and then I set the spell satchel on my succulent, like in there around that so that the energies are going together. So I don't actually uh, take anything from the plant. So I just wanna make sure everybody knows what the satchel is. Um, yeah, when you think of succulents, think of sacred waters. That's like the best uh, association for magical properties and like how to work with them. That is all nine plants. Damn, it is 8.32, okay. <laughs> All right, she's oh gonna goodness. take a break or a breath. How's everybody doing? <laughs> well, who's got a hundred questions? I'm just kidding. We don't we don't have to go on uh, any longer. I got through all of the cards. The only thing left that I had, I have one note card that's like, in case you were wondering. I don't know. There's people who maybe they've never had a plant before. Like, what soil do I buy? What about pots when I pick them out? You know how to. Feeding your plant. You have to feed your plants. They need food and sunlight and love. But feeding your plants. Feeding your plants. Like a generic uh, miracle Grow mix that goes in water. You can get these on Amazon so cheap. Please don't buy them at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's so it's water, warm. but don't overwater. Water underwater is better. Mm -hmm. I'm an overwater, or I was. I'm yeah. no longer an overwater. Now I actually touch them. Yeah, touching to them. see how so, how dry the soil is before I give them any water, and then I just give them a little drink, and they're so much happier. Okay, and for pots, please, 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 please. If anything, this one still has a tag on it. Every pot you buy, so like I love Home Goods. I, I know there's gotta be other people who love Home Goods like I do. The aesthetics in there, the options. Oh gosh, um, when you buy pots for plants that you don't want to kill. Okay, 
buy them with the hole in the bottom. Always. You're the easiest, fastest, quickest way to drown a plant is to put it in a pot without a hole in the bottom. So if you have a plant with a hole in the bottom, you want a saucer. Buy, these are the ceramic ones, which I do get a lot of these pots from Walmart. I think that's totally fine. They're cheapest there. Believe me, I look around. And then the cheaper, cheaper ones are these plastic ones. Like they have them in every size. This is a massive guy, but I have little plastic ones in every size just so that I can keep up with when I water stuff. I don't want to damage my stuff. I have a wood floor, so got to keep water off the floor, but it's so that I can water them and not worry about taking them to the sink every time, waiting for them to drain and then bringing them back. Like make it easy on yourself, get a saucer, get something to put under your, your plant. So I think I can help you so you can take a break. Oh, you want me to stop? Okay. Yeah. So I'll go over a few of the elements here that she's got or the, a few of the notes that she's got. So dirt for dirt, indoor potting soil. Always indoor. The outdoor stuff has bugs in it. Please, please, please. Okay. For pots, you want clay versus sealed uh, yeah. drainage and then size. And so size, if she mentioned earlier, if you want to keep your plant small, Put it in a small pot. Mm -hmm. So, and then we have, uh, are you a fan of clay versus sealed? What's the difference yeah. with clay so versus sealed? The one, again, the ones at Home Goods where they're all the way painted through. The problem with this is that there's no air for the plant to breathe. I know that sounds crazy, but the soil needs air in it for it to breathe. Otherwise it will get soppy and it will mold inside. So pots like this are just for show. This is from Ikea because I also love Ikea. That's <laughs> why I have a couple plants that aren't doing well. And that and the they're they're pots like this, so they're yeah. ceramic, but they're sealed. They're so sealed. I get yeah. that. So having plants in clay pots where the water can be absorbed into the pot, it's it's another place for it to go if you overwater it, and it holds moisture if you underwater it. So it just helps the plant. Okay. Yeah. Then we have sunlight. So we have burnt leaves, dried out, and angle. What did you mean by that? Oh. All right, this, this connects us with our witchy stuff and like understanding the cycles of the earth and the sun's direction and all that. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> um, if you have a window that is facing south, an important thing to remember for your plants there is in the summertime, the sun is gonna be more over the top like this, but in the wintertime, it is gonna angle in. So you may have to adjust your plants so they don't get burnt. Because if you have sun coming through a window onto a plant, you're doing like the magnifying glass on an ant situation and you will have burn spots on your plants just from that. So the angle of the sun is what I was trying to say about that. Okay. All right. Food. We talked about food. So, yeah. you know, a multi-purpose um, uh, plant food monthly or every six weeks because your plants need to have food. Mm -hmm. um roots exposed roots new oh, pot yeah. okay if you have exposed roots you need a new pot yeah so the other beneficial thing for you can barely see that one i know i have i brought one in here that was like had a root sticking out yeah, basil has a tiny one um okay so the beneficial thing for pots with holes in them is you know when it's time to repot your plant because its little root will start poking out and when the root pokes out like this any of this new growth to so see how this little section of this guy is like dead and brown. That is because the new root growth is exposed to air half the time. So guess what? He doesn't like that. And the new growth that it just got using that root, gone, dead. So it we are supported. So we talked about saucers for your plants. Yeah. That have holes in the bottom of them. So you don't ruin your furniture and things like that and get water when you water them where you don't want it to be. Yeah. Um, also let's see, ceiling fans will dry out your plants. So, you know, the fan running is going to take out moisture out of the air. Yep. And so um, your plants will dry out faster. Right. So just watch them. I find a good way to do it. And I'm fairly new to plants. I used to <laughs> have a black, plants. I used to have a black thumb. I would kill everything. Um, and I've gotten better, much, much better at it, mostly because I pay attention to them now where before I would just like ignore them. Now I go around and touch them. I touch the soil to see how dry the soil is. 
I, I was on a schedule, but the weather is changing here. It was very, very hot. And now that it's not so hot, they don't need quite as, I was watering twice a week and now they don't need quite as much. So I'm testing the soil before I put water on them, but the ceiling fans dry them out. And then also you have um, bringing them indoors, depending on where you live. So um, some uh, bringing in, out, no. oh, bringing in outdoor elements. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, Pine cone sticks, yeah. moss, Spanish moss. So, so sorry. It's okay. We love those sort of things. I'm a stick collector. And <laughs> if you bring in anything from outdoors that you find, be aware that it could have bugs on it. And once you get a bug in your house plants, like you have to treat them all. And it's a pain in the ass. Like just yeah. So just be careful, don't get bugs. Careful what you bring in. Like leave it outside for a while. Make sure you give everything something time to vacate. Um, if you're concerned about tiny bugs, put it in a plastic baggie and leave it out in the sun and whatever's in there you will kill, including fungus and all that. Um, so if you want to bring stuff in, but let's see, keep a schedule of watering. That's what I did to get myself on track and how <laughs> I have a bunch of healthy plants now, which is really glorious in my home. Um, let's see, trim to help new growth, mm -hmm. pest control, um, neem, oil. Some kind of neem oil. There's for people who do not want to kill stuff or poison themselves or their children or their pets, the best thing for you to use is something called neem oil, N-E-E-M, neem oil. You, It's not hazardous to us. You should still wash it off when you get it on you, but it's only going to kill the things that are on the plants by, by suffocating them. I'm sorry for you guys that you can't be on my plants because I need to use them. <laughs> like, I don't like killing stuff, but white flies, awful, so... And then we have um, local grower versus box store, pros and cons. Yeah. If you can find a local grower, definitely buy from them. The plants are usually healthier, better maintained. The stuff they use on them is better. Acosta, I feel like I said Acosta. Costa is our local grower here in Florida. And when we buy Costa plants, they just have stuff wrong with them. When we buy from a different place that grows all their own stuff, I don't have bugs that come in. They last longer. They're a hardier plant. Like the stock is better because they choose their seeds. So they know what they're growing. Costa, on the other hand, it's throwing down hundreds of millions of seeds and just getting plants out the door as fast as possible. The yeah, other Walmart, I've noticed yeah. that I have, I have a certain plant that I buy there and it always dies. And this thing costs like $8. It's some kind it's of the a water plant. It's the water plant. Yeah. And then when I took it apart, I was like, they took this little bitty plant that was a root ball and stuck it in this other big pot and charged me $16 for it. And like a sucker, I bought it and it died <laughs> three times. <laughs> so Walmart, eh, you know, unless it's something super easy to grow, like the pothos, I would not buy, or the snake, the snake plant, I would not buy them from Walmart. I would buy them from a local grower, farmer's market, uh, something like that. Yeah. People, you know, yard sales. I got this beautiful elephant ear in my yard that I bought at a yard sale for $5. People sell this stuff. So, okay. Uh, I think that's it. And we are, yeah, um, we're, we're over. We're over by almost 12. 15 minutes. Okay. Um, I'll be putting more stuff up. I know that it was a lot of information. Thank you so much for joining Does us. Does anyone have any questions though? <laughs> Quickly, just a few minutes. If you guys have, yeah. have questions. Yeah. I'll save for these for cat. I'm sorry. If your cat ate it, any of these plants, would it? Oh, oh, we have something on pets, actually. Yeah, we, we have I'm going to post this so you guys do not have to write it all down. So toxicity, we have a plant toxicity. This card. is what I'm going to post for all the plants that I talked about. The nine I put on there, the whether or not it's toxic and if it's mild versus um, like. Severe. Severe. Yeah. Cause there's aloe vera is, it depends on how much they eat. So it can be anywhere from mild throwing up diarrhea to uh, moderate, which is like, they need pills to absorb it like charcoal pills. Um, basil is safe. Most ferns are safe. The ivy, uh, some are safe. English ivy is not safe. So a lot of the ivies we buy in our stores are English ivy, not safe. Um, mint is actually toxic, which is crazy because it's not toxic to humans, obviously. But catnip, even though it's a type of mint, is safe for animals. The snake plant is toxic. Uh, rosemary is absolutely safe. 
pathos is toxic. Uh, most of our succulents are safe. Like, so most succulents that you can buy, safe if your plants chew on them. The great thing about that is once they start chewing on them, they usually spit them out. So it just depends on how much they uh, ingest. With I know with snake plant, this actually has like a milkiness to it. And um, that's what makes them really sick. Tank eats my pothos and he eats my spider plant. And sometimes he has explosive poo. I don't know. So, <laughs> like he, sometimes he throws up in the middle of the night. Yeah. There's probably a relationship there. It's, you know, the, the good thing about most animals, as long as they're not super, super inbred, which that sounds really offensive, but there are people out there who do that breed uh, daughters and fathers and stuff like that. Um, they know, like they have a smell and they know what they shouldn't touch. They understand things that are bad for them, especially once they taste it. So, but we do have the crazy animals that just eat everything. Her dog eats everything. We're walking down the street. He's picking up a leaf, a stick, an acorn. Like it doesn't matter. He's, everything is going in that boy's mouth. Yeah. So I am posting this as well for you guys. So I'll have like 10 photos going up of the cards just so that everybody can see stuff. Um, and she made really cute cards with little <laughs> pictures on them that even show little pictures on how to propagate for a reminder. Yeah, so when you see the cards, uh, I drew the plant, but then I drew the propagation. So like this is just straight out of the dirt. Show me one for water. Water. And no then water. if you can grow it in water, I put it in like a little blue bowl of water. So that way it's super easy for reference for you guys. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get these up there on this meetup um on this meeting's pictures and then i think that's it and you guys i can see seven in the chat if there's anybody who needs to go i totally understand we're running way over um that was a lot that was i have a question yeah absolutely um i've been propagate water propagating a pothos that my friend gave to me yeah. um and it's doing great but when do I put it in water and how do I transfer? I mean, how do I transfer it from water propagation to soil?